here. Subscribe so you never miss an upload. Welcome to Dungeon Craft. I'm Professor Dungeon Master, and this channel is about all the best in independent RPGs and homebrew D&D. And today, we're taking a look at the Black Sword Hack. Black Sword Hack is a game by Kobayashi. It is published by the Merry Mushman. Full disclosure, the Merry Mushman sent me this book. They send me a package every few months. I don't know how they got my name, but I get a lot of stuff from them. But I was not paid for this review. Hardbound, digest-sized, slick pages, about a hundred of them. And it is based on sword and sorcery fiction. So we're talking Farvern and Grey Mauser, Red Sonia, and of course, Elric. The forward is by Bill King. You may be familiar with him if you enjoy Warhammer fiction. He is the creator of Gotrek and Felix. And it turns out this guy's a serious gamer. He says he loved the Black Hack. He talks about the influence of Moorcock, Liber, and Carl Edward Wagner. He talks about the OSR and how it produces things that are different than the, quote, pasteurized, homogenized coffee table books the modern fantasy gaming industry produces. Right on, Bill. So Black Sword Hack is Elric in everything but the IP. The core mechanic are attribute tests. You roll under your ability score. We use the six traditional ability scores, strength, intelligence, wisdom, dexterity, and you roll under it on a 20-sided die to succeed. Now, if you don't succeed, there's this great mechanic. You can succeed at a cost, stealth. You manage to stay hidden, but leave traces of your passage behind you. So a failed roll doesn't need to derail the fiction, and I love that. A roll of one is always a critical success, a roll of 20 is always a critical failure, and they use advantage and disadvantage just like Dungeons and Dragons. They also use simplified distances and a usage die and a doom die. I'm not gonna get into the mechanic, but a doom die is a usage die. When it's depleted, the character has brought doom upon themselves, and that doom consists of having disadvantage to rolls until you take a rest. Combat is player facing, which means the game master does not roll combat dice. The players do it all. They roll to attack and then they roll to defend themselves. Attacking and defending with a melee weapon is strength. Attacking and dodging a ranged weapon is dexterity. And armor absorbs damage. Hit points. When you're reduced to zero, you become helpless. You toss a d6 and on a six you're killed. On a one to five, you suffer an impairment of some sort. You also pop up with D4 hit points. I'm not crazy about this mechanic or short and long rests. I prefer death at zero hit points. To me, a one in six chance of being killed isn't that deadly. Although I prefer this to the D&D death save system because at least your character can get up again and do something. Your attributes, again, the six traditional D&D scores. You roll a 2D6 and consult this chart and it will determine a number between eight and 13. This is an improvement over Black Hack, which uses 3D6 to determine ability scores. My wife recently created a character with an ability score of four, which means she only succeeded on a one to three, and that's way too low. And this chart solves that problem. You can choose a character origin, barbarian, civilized, decadent, and roll a d20 to determine your background. So if you roll an 18, you were born inside a wicker statue about to be burned. Barbarians are Conan and Farfar types, civilized, gray mauser, decadent are the Elric type of characters. Then you choose a background, which will give you the ability to go berserk or cast spells, cause extra damage when sneaking up from behind. Survivor. It takes you d6 minutes to find something that can be used as a knife or a club. It's like a feat that will differentiate your character from other characters. There are no classes in this game. The obligatory equipment chapter, the price list is variable because what something costs might vary by region or availability. Again, armor and shields absorb damage. Experience is interesting. Every time you survive an adventure, you gain a story. You write down the title of the adventure on your character sheet, and when you've accumulated a number of stories equal to your current level, you go up a level. So if you're fifth level, you need to accumulate five stories to move to sixth level. It's simple, it's thematic, I love it. You got dark packs in case you wanna sell your soul to a demon like Elric. Sorcery, there is a spell list. Every warlock I think begins with four random spells and they are levelless. You roll to cast, if you fail, there is a critical failure chart. You have to go and seek your spells. Find them by looking through dungeons and tombs and getting them off of scrolls. Runic weapons will allow you to create a cursed weapon like Elric's Stormbringer. The bestiary has some unique creepy monsters like the Blind Hunters, Eaters of the Dead, Ghost Legionnaires, and Hollow Monks. As well as traditional sword and sorcery fare like Snake People. What do you find on the course? 
Lots of games have this, like Mirk Bori, but some people are turned off by that game's garish colors and the splash pages. This is similar, but the layout is a lot clearer. If you want your book to be a practical resource, clearer print and layout like this is much more beneficial. Regional adventure seeds, so if you want to have a dark company type campaign, you got mercenary bands. City of Thieves is like Lankmar. The Dust Empire is like Thieves World. And there are random city generators, so you can create your own city. There are lots of random charts here, so you're not recreating Elric's world, you're creating your own doomed world. And a cool adventure called the Slayers of the Blood God that can be completed in just two hours. I love that. If you want to introduce your players, see if they like a game, I prefer short scenarios that can be completed in one evening. We got some great advice here on running the game, and I love this. This is Black Sword Hack for the Lone Adventurer. I get so many questions about games that can be used for solo play, and this has a complete system for that. I also like this. Your favorite sword and sorcery book is a plot generator, and they tell you how to steal ideas without your players knowing about it. And we got a monster generator, names by origin, and this great character sheet. So simple and clear. Your six ability scores and only what is necessary. I love it. Black Sword Hack is really well done. I have the original, but this is really awesome looking. There are a few changes I would make, like death at zero hit points, but I love the layout of this game, and Black Sword Hack gets two big thumbs up from me. Also very cool from the Merry Mushman, I got this Folklore Bestiary. Now you can get this in OSE format or 5E format, and it contains not only a bunch of monsters, but their background, their stats, but also their layers. In this case, this is a giant snail that is in and of itself a dungeon. Monsters like Jack and Irons are taken from folklore of specific countries. So they're just a little bit more flavorful than your average monster. If your player is already familiar with everything in the monster manual, this is a great resource. Both Black Sword Hack and the Folklore Bestiary are available at the links below. Also below you'll find links to my own game, Deathbringer, as well as DungeonCraft Patreon where you can get an extended version of this video and more cool stuff. Until the next time, may all your rolls be 20s.